All right guys, welcome to RC Mojo. More Jimny today. We're going to have a go at fitting some lights. Unlike the Tamiya hard bodies, there aren't any light buckets. And I really don't want to bodge it and just drill some holes in the body and poke some LEDs through. So we're going to have to make some things. The headlights are going to be easy. They're circular, so one of the generic light kits will have something in. This one's from Yeah Racing. We're going to do the front lights last, as they're going to be really quick and easy to do. The rear lights, however, we have complex curves, the body is thin and will flex. I've not come across anything that's a near fit, so it's going to have to be a complete scratch build. Now, there's a couple of methods that seem to get used a fair bit. There's the styrene build, the carved foam. I've seen some rather good vac formed buckets, but that requires tools I don't have. The method I've seen talked about, but not seen anyone use, is to make the entire cluster from resin. So I figured I'd give it a go, make it up as I go along and see how it all ends up. Okay, we can't just pour the resin on the body and call it done, it's just going to flow and make a mess. So I've cut these parts from some styrene, there's an outer wall and some separators to go between the red lights and the indicators. They'll get glued in with a little bit of 5 minute epoxy just to seal up the edges. We don't want the clusters to stick to the body. Trying to pop them out would probably damage the paint. I reckon we'll get a good enough shape if we line the area with some bog standard sticky tape. It's thin enough and if we get some finger grease on the glue side it should peel off quite easily. Well, I hope it'll peel off quite easily. I'm going to do one side at a time with five minute epoxy. If you give yourself too much to do in one go you'll end up making a bit of a mess. As it is we're going to have to keep an eye on the parts to keep them upright. The idea is to spread some of the epoxy along the edge of the cluster and place the styrene bit in. I found if you light up the outside through the decal you can clearly see the separators. The fun bit of all this is trying to keep them at the right angle while they're very slowly trying to collapse. But with the 5 minute it doesn't really take that long for it all to go solid. On the inside edge we need to glue in the edge strip. A bit more 5 minute on the edges being generous with the blobs. Let that go off and repeat for the other side. Have a really good look once it's all gone off. Inspect it all and make completely sure it's all sealed up. We want it to be completely watertight. Now the best bit, we need to mix up some resin to fill up all the holes. I reckon a clear casting resin would be ideal, but all I've got to hand is some finishing resin. It'll probably go a bit yellow, but since the lights are red, it won't really matter too much. The important bit is, it's going to be thin enough to pour, it sets very hard, and takes 12 hours to mostly cure. The 12 hours is fairly important, as it will give all the air bubbles time to surface. With the body jigged up so the clusters are level, I found a wooden clothes peg was just the right size, we can start pouring the resin. We want to fill up the pocket so the resin is just under the top of the styrene. It will be a bit tricky to do without spilling onto the paint, just be really careful and take your time. It's now the next day and the resin has set quite nicely. It's not completely solid, it still has that slightly tacky feel to it, but it's going to be good enough to remove. The idea is we want to flex the shell enough and pull at the tape so it will come free. Turns out the tape sticks to the unpainted body extremely well, so it was a bit more of a struggle than I'd hoped, but they came out in the end. And there we go, one cluster. There's still a bit to do though. The excess 5 minute epoxy around the edge needs to get trimmed off. And remember, always cut away from your body. Yes, I have bad habits. <laughs> With that all tidied up, we can apply some paint. First, a good coat of white on the back face. It will help reflect the light forward. It wants to be as opaque as possible, so you need a good few coats. When that's done, we want to completely block out any light leaking back into the body. So, start building up some black coats. We want to paint over the back and the sides, lots of thin coats until it's all completely solid. I'm going to paint some lines over the separations between the lights. I'm thinking it might give a crisper edge to the lights, but it might not do anything. <laughs> Next we need to drill some holes for the LEDs. First I'll make some shallow pilot holes, just enough that the 3mm bit won't wander and damage the surface. I drill the final holes with a small drill press with the depth set. That means the press stops you drilling the holes too deep and breaking through the bottom. If you do it by hand, just be really careful. The LEDs just drop in, just leaving the wiring. 
I'll do that off camera, but if you want to know how to wire up LEDs, we've got a couple of videos with all the info you need. I'll put some links in the description. And here we have the completed clusters. I don't think they look bad at all. And time for a test. I'm going to use a bench power supply with the current limit. Basically, if I short out the crop clips, the supply will shut itself down. Just make sure that we don't damage anything accidentally. And there we go. Not bad at all. I reckon the inner separator probably could have done with some tin foil or something to really block the light from getting into the indicator bit. And maybe something mixed with the epoxy to diffuse the light a bit. A small amount of micro balloons, perhaps. Even so, I like it. The real test will be how it looks when it's on the body behind the decal. It might just diffuse the light for us. I'm going to fit the clusters with some glue. We need to be careful what glue we use though. The body will flex so you don't want to use more epoxy, it will just crack over time. There's a few other glues that might work, but the usual fallback of good old hot glue will work a treat here. It will stick well and remain just that little bit flexible. Just watch out if you live somewhere really hot, if you leave it in the sun it might all fall apart. But here in the UK that really doesn't come up a lot. We need to carefully position the cluster before gluing. The easiest way to make sure it looks just right is to power it up and adjust it until the light comes out where we want it. Firmly hold it in place and tack it in with a couple of blobs of hot glue. Make sure it's fully set and once it's completely solid we can go all the way around the edge and seal it up. The last thing we want is to get muddy water in there. Both the clusters are fitted in the same way. Right, I've connected up the clusters to the power supply. Let's turn it on and see how it looks. Well, that's worked. I think this experiment could probably be called a success. If I turn off the desk uh, studio lights, yeah, that works rather well. The indicators aren't emitting much light, so we've got away with that. Nice. The quick bit now, the headlights. I've got this pack of roof lights from Year Racing, which come with a few light buckets and a light bar. They're a bit cheesy, but as light buckets to go on the inside, they're going to do just fine. The ones we're interested in are the two small round ones. They're exactly the right size. They'll need some LEDs fitting. Again, LED wiring info is linked to in the description. For this video, we will just magically install the LEDs between clips really easy fitting LEDs like that. The back of the LEDs has been painted just like the rear cluster and have resistors on board so we just need some power. Like so. They look a bit blue but that's due to the white balance of the camera being set up for the filament lights. They're actually a neutral white. Very bright too but they get drowned out a bit. I've rounded off the top third or so of the buckets to better fit inside the body. We need to seal them up to the body just like the rears to stop the water getting in and I didn't want to have to bridge large gaps with the glue. Again, just like the rears, we can power up the lights to find the ideal position. When they're spot on, hot glue can come out and we can glue them in place. Same with the other one. Now we can give them a test. I've hooked them both up to the power supply. Well, they work. And with the studio lights off, that looks pretty good I think. It's tempting to cut out the headlight decals just to see how it looks. But I think I'll try and get a spare decal sheet first, just in case it looks pretty awful. That just leaves the final bit of wiring. For now, I'm just going to power them from a spare connector on the receiver, so they'll turn on and off with the main power switch. All the LEDs are in parallel with their own resistor, and the whole lot is terminated in a servo connector. Really simple. In the not too distant future, I'm going to have a mini light controller ready that will let me turn them on and off from the transmitter as well as some other things, but that's for another time. For now they'll just light up when the truck gets turned on. That really just leaves a quick test outside, and since it's dark, now is as good a time as any. Well, looks like there's a fair bit of light leakage back into the body. Nothing a little bit of black paint won't fix. I guess there's some small gaps and the hot glue is acting a bit like a light guide. Other than that though, I'd say today's build was a success. So thanks for watching, if you enjoyed the video do please hit the like button and if you're not already why not subscribe, it's free after all, <laughs> bye guys.